Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to your second video of today here on GBFC. If you want to watch the first one, we're going through some of the comments that have been made towards Graham Potter from Graham Potter from Enzo Fernandez. Link is in the description. Make sure you are subscribed to GBFC with bell notifications on because tomorrow, Tottenham versus Chelsea, this is your preview right here. But there will be a watch along. If you are not yet joined the Patreon, then you cannot be involved in the halftime call in. And the pre-match call-ins that we're hopefully going to be doing tomorrow for the game against Spurs on Discord. So, Patreon links in the description. Tottenham versus Chelsea, it doesn't get any bigger than this. For so many different reasons, contextually, for Chelsea's season, in terms of the rivalry and the passion that this fixture evokes every single time from players, from managers, from fans, we see Chelsea step up in this game. No matter what kind of form we're in, no matter what season we are having compared to Spurs, Chelsea always show up for this fixture. We have very rarely been beaten by Spurs in the past. Tottenham fans, they think Arsenal's their biggest rivalry. As Chelsea fans, let me know what your biggest rivalry is in the comments down below. People still say Arsenal. For me, my hatred for Tottenham runs very, very deep. First one is I've not very I've not met very many people in my life who are actually Spurs fans who I like. I like Flav and I like my, my mate Will Barnes from home. Other than that, I've never really met Tottenham fans that I get on with. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if that is me being prejudiced or not, but I don't care. It's just the facts, it's just the truth, you know. I, there's some Chelsea fans I don't like as well, but very few. <laughs> anyway, Tottenham versus Chelsea. I despise them. I want to win this game more than any fixture. When the fixture list comes out, I don't care who we've got in week number one. I care about when's the home game, when's the away game. Now it's a bit different because I don't go to the games because I live on the other side of the world. I used to go home and away and this was the one that you would get up for the most. This is the one where I've seen Chelsea go and win a couple of times already away from home at Tottenham in their new stadium. They struggle against us but there's so many added caveats which make this game tomorrow just massive. There is Antonio Conte as their manager, the fallout that came from the glorious backing of Thomas Tuchel in that fight that he had with Antonio Conte on the sidelines in a game where Chelsea were robbed. If you're a Spurs fan who stumbles across this video, please justify and rationalise in the comments down below how you genuinely believe you came away with a draw at Stamford Bridge, including just neither of the goals that they scored should have stood in my opinion. Chelsea were fantastic. It was one of the best performances I've seen from this Chelsea team this season. Now, Graham Potter is here. Two wins in 15 matches. I think it's like three and 17 or something like that. And we are in arguably the worst period of form since the 1980s. So imagine we go into this game tomorrow. What are the repercussions of a win, a draw, a loss? Well, let's start with a win, shall we? Because I think we're going to win tomorrow. I genuinely do. If you agree, hit the like button. The reason I think Chelsea win this game tomorrow is because it's just a typical Chelsea thing to do. As well as that, I think I've not been impressed by this Spurs team at all this season. Even when they've been winning games, I'm watching them and I'm thinking, you should be winning games because you've significantly got better players than the opposition you're playing against. I, I think the Antonio Conte thing at Spurs is just a mess ready to happen. You've seen this, see, even recently. One week they look great, next week they don't. Hyunmin Son's been playing a bit better recently. Harry Kane is still exceptional. Arguably the best striker in the Premier League other than Erling Haaland. They have still got players that can seriously hurt Chelsea. Win tomorrow and the boost that we get going into that game against Leeds and then Dortmund is absolutely massive. Win tomorrow. Suddenly the fans start to change a little bit because instead of just being directly going in on Graham Potter, we get to enjoy a Chelsea victory draw against Spurs tomorrow. Here's what happens. Potter buys himself a bit of time. Arguably, compared to some of the recent defeats, a draw away at Spurs is not the worst result. In my opinion, there is pressure on Graham Potter, despite all of the mixed reports we've heard this week about is there crisis meetings going on? Is there an emergency at Chelsea? Is Potter having three matches to save his job? I do think there is pressure. And I think the more Results don't go in Chelsea's favour. The louder the fan voice gets, and if you want to hear my thoughts on how we should be addressing that problem, please check today's earlier video. But a draw, let's be realistic, considering the way we've been playing, is not the worst result in the world. So, 
it buys Potter some time. Yes, we, we're not elated, we're not happy. It kind of keeps the, the bandwagon the same as it is now where people are voicing that Potter's not the right man for the job. Luz, my word, we know exactly how this is going to go. Lose 1-0 but play well. We cannot keep praising performance improvements. It is absolutely essential right now that we focus on results. Yes, there is a process. I bloody hate the word, so I have to say it like a moron. There is a process at the moment. Chelsea cannot keep praising mediocrity. As Jose Mourinho said, a big club stops being a big club when we praise improvements but losses. Chelsea cannot afford to lose. Graham Potter cannot afford to lose this game. Any Chelsea manager at any time can never justify a defeat to Tottenham. We have to turn up for these games. This is an absolute no-brainer. Chelsea have got to be there tomorrow giving absolutely everything. We need to see a 500% performance increase to be able to get a result. Spurs are going to be up for it too. Their stadium is going to smell blood with a Chelsea team that at the moment are an embarrassment. It's easy to pick on us right now. It's easy to bully us. There are a lot of people as well that see that it is something that Chelsea have been relatively unlucky. We've had so many injuries. Graham Potter's got to bleed so many different players of different nationalities from different leagues into the same squad. A lot of football fans can see this. It's not about giving time. It's not about the process. It's about beating and smashing them off the park. And I pray in this game tomorrow we get it done. So without any further ado... If you're not yet subscribed, make sure you're subscribed and we begin my Chelsea lineup to go to Tottenham Hotspur and get the result. And I have changed things formation wise for this game because we have got a lot of attacking players, a lot of midfielders who should be in the starting 11. Otherwise, there are too many creative players that will just end up on the bench. But for this game, I've gone with something that's worked very well for Chelsea against Spurs before three at the back. We saw Thomas Tuchel do it. We have seen Frank Lampard go there and do it and get a result. And that was the last time I watched this game in the league. And we won 2-0. We were fantastic. I think Willian scored both goals. I've gone with a back three. Kepper in goal. Fafana. Wesley Fafana in there. Thiago Silva. Badia Shield. And on the graphic, I've lined up Ben Chilwell on the left. Rhys James on the right. And it looks a bit like a 3-4-3. I think this for Chelsea is going head-to-head -head against Tottenham. If you look at Spurs this season, Pedro Porro has obviously come in. There is the beef there with Xiao Felix that we might discuss later on if I think it's relevant. You've also had Emerson Royale playing pretty well recently. Since Pedro Porro's come in, he's turned up and he's managed to keep him out of the team so far. He scored in their last game as well against West Ham. Spurs, you don't know what you're going to get. One week they look fantastic, the next week they're absolutely awful. Yes, I think the football they play under Antonio Conte this season has been pathetic at times. I think even Chelsea have played better than Spurs, but Spurs get the results. Chelsea need to stop being that high XG team. We need to convert chances and score goals. This team, I think there is good quality defenders in there. Wesley Fofana coming in. We need to start seeing why we spent in excess of £70 million on him. Badia Shiel has been fantastic. Moments in the game against Saints where he looked weary. Thiago Silva, he scores in this fixture too but you cannot remove him from this team. In terms of the central midfield too, I was thinking of playing Ruben Loftus-Cheek in there, but I've gone with Mateo Kovacic and Enzo Fernandez again. I think we really struggled last week, to be fair. But Denis Sakaria looks like he's back. I think he'll be on the bench. I would love at some point soon to see a midfield three of Enzo Zakaria Kante. We've still got to wait for N'Golo Kante, according to Potter's press conference yesterday, Kante is not ready. But you get industry in this midfield. You have got, again, I think balance between the two of them. As long as Reese James and Ben Shaw are fit enough to play, I've not even put Cucurella on the bench, to be honest. If I'm looking at my bench now, you guys will see it in a minute. But you know what? We'll just stick the front three up now. Mudrik, Jao Felix and Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling was one of the only bright sparks in the game against Southampton. Jao Felix, he looks very, very comfortable at Chelsea. Lost himself a little bit against the Saints, but I think in this game, Felix is one of those players where he can make a name for himself here. Mudrik is, the, in my opinion, the epitome of why I call this Chelsea team a ticking time bomb. We have not seen, other than that cameo performance against Liverpool, anything special from Mudrik to justify the price tag. That's the fact so far. Yes, he's still a young player. Yes, he will grow and develop and will need time 
to get back to the level of fitness because he hadn't been playing for Shakhtar since November. So it was going to take time. But this kind of match is the kind of game where you look at that front three. Raheem Sterling wants to be the guy at Chelsea right now to drag us out the doldrums. He's experienced enough to know that it takes massive personalities in moments of time like Chelsea are in right now. It takes someone with know-how and guts to drag Chelsea up. And I think Raheem Sterling, when he came on against Saints, even though we lost and he missed, well, from six yards out, it was a great clearance off the line from Perro. But I think Sterling could have a massive impact on this team. Mudrick, you've got that sharp pace and brilliance in tight spaces and moments. We had that half an hour against West Ham when Chelsea were one nil up, where we did look very, very good indeed. Jao Felix, yes, I don't think he should be that most advanced man. Yes, when you look at this graphic, I don't think we see the Chelsea lineup and formation that we're ever going to look at as what managed to get, get the best from Graham Potter. I think we've got to micromanage the situation right now by adjusting what we do going into the biggest rivalry game and a match that has become imperative for Chelsea to win to turn our season around. And I think a back three, trying to go man for man against Spurs is the way to do so. You've got pace in both of those centre-backs alongside Silva, Fafana and Badia Shield. They're calm, composed defenders. They've got speed. We've got the quality of Chilwell going forward and Rhys James. Kovacic, Enzo can alternate with going forward, sitting back. And then you've got the speed and the power going forward for Chelsea with Mudrik. Sterling, I think, is the match winner here for us. And I think Jao Felix could have a coming-of-age game in a Chelsea shirt. And he was the last player for us to score... So, score predictions for this London derby. I don't think you guys realise just how big this game is. It's flipping huge. I think Chelsea go there and win 2-1. I don't see Spurs not scoring. And I, I know that you guys are going to say, how do you think we're going to score two? I don't know. I don't even have a reason for you. Other than, I think going man for man, Chelsea can beat them. If everyone's on their game, if we buy into this mentality in the dressing room in Cobham right now that... Everyone's still together. Everyone's still fighting for the same cause. Read Enzo's comments. Read Potter's press conference. It was positive. And I just think that at one stage or another, we've got to turn it around. I want to believe it's this game. Chelsea always show up against Spurs. We're going to win. We're absolutely going to win. So make sure you are subscribed to GBFC with notifications turned on. The live stream tomorrow for the watch along. Make sure you have joined the Patreon if you want to. That means you get access to the Discord server, which means tomorrow you'll have access to the call-in feature, which uh, I'm going to have to set up today with a few tests with a few friends of mine to make sure I can actually call you guys and you can be heard on the stream. I'm nervous, but I'm bloody excited for this one. Come on, you blues.